in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The Gospel of today from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 11, in which actually our Lord Jesus Christ warned his followers, his disciples, from two things from hypocrisy and also from fear and these two things attack us until now sometimes we act in hypocritical way and many times we are uh, taken by fear we are scared and anxious and fearful about hypocrisy the Lord likened hypocrisy by the leaven when he said beware of the leaven of the Pharisees which is hypocrisy why he said hypocrisy is like leaven in hypocrisy I pretend to be something different from who I am I pretend to be wiser than I am more godly than who I am uh, more uh, uh, walking in the fear of God more than I am so I try to deceive the people to give myself bigger a place than who I am that's why the Lord said hypocrisy is like living if you have a small dough and you put leaven in it, it will be bigger. So it will give you the impression that this dough is big, although it's small. The same way in hypocrisy, I give impression to the people that I am different, bigger, smarter, much holy, uh, more walking in the fear of God than who I am and it is sin it is sin of deception and the Lord gave two reasons why we should not walk in hypocrisy the first reason he said for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed nor hidden that will not be known whatever you want to cover it will be revealed Whatever you want to hide, it will be known. Unless God, in His mercy, decided to cover us. That's why in Thanksgiving prayer we say, We thank you, for you have covered us. And God covers us when we repent. Any sin we do it, when we repent, God in His love, in His kindness, in His mercies, covers us. And we thank Him in all our prayers, for He has covered us. But if we don't repent, then whatever I'm trying to cover, or I'm trying to hide from the people, it will be revealed. If not now, it will be revealed in the last day. So, there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known, unless God decided to cover us and to erase all our sins by his mercy the second reason he told them whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light and whatever you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops anything you want to conspire the, the first reason is about my uh, myself so if I want to cover something within myself without actually sharing this with anybody second reason is about conspiracy so whatever you spoken so I spoke with, some, with someone but I'm spoken in dark I'm spoken in ear, in the ear, in, in a room so here me and somebody else trying to conspire or trying to make a plan 
and any plan is done in the dark usually it is a evil plan or wicked plan otherwise why we don't put it out in the light why you put it in the dark so he said whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light and what you have spoken in the ear in in a room will be proclaimed in the house tops so whether I'm trying to hide something by myself or I am planning bad conspiracy with somebody else this will be revealed unless I repent and God decide to cover all my weakness and all my sin that's why the Lord warned us from the sin of hypocrisy in the second part of the gospel of today he warned us from the sin of fear and I call it sin because fear is the sin of lack of faith there is difference between reverence or walking in the fear of God which means respect or reverence but the fear that came or comes from lack of faith many times the Lord rebuked the disciples why are you fearful you of little faith number one we fear from death that's why the Lord told us don't be afraid of those who kill the body those who kill the body like persecutions enemies of Christianity or those kill the body like diseases and illness that kill the body we should not be afraid of death because death is not an end of life it is a beginning of a better life if we walk in the fear of God that's why he told us you know I will show you whom you should fear fear him who after he has killed has power to cast into hell yes I say to you fear him so we should not fear the physical death but rather to fear the eternal death eternal death when we don't repent but here on earth our life is limited regardless we're going to live 30 years 40 years 100 years it will come to an end how many years it will end but the eternity has no end so we should not worry about our physical death rather we should worry about our eternal death then the Lord told us that even our physical life here on earth God is watching over us he told us don't worry about what you eat or what you drink or what you wear your heavenly father knows that you need all of this seek first the kingdom of God of his righteousness and all these things will be added to you in the gospel of today the Lord told us don't you know that five sparrows are sold for two copper coins if five sparrows are sold for two copper coins then one copper coin get how many sparrows will get two then two copper coins will get how many sparrows? Four. But if you're going to buy four with two copper coins, you will get one for free. That's why five sparrows are sold for two copper coins. So there is one sparrow has no value. Has no value. But even this sparrow that has no value, that the people sell it for free, he said, that, but God, does not forget even one of them not one of them is forgotten before God so if this is power that has no value before men is not forgotten before God we whom God purchased by his own blood do you think that God will forget about us he told us don't be afraid you are of more value than many sparrows you are of more value than many sparrows your value is the blood of Jesus Christ he died on the cross to purchase me and to purchase you that's our value so if God cares about the sparrow that has no value 
wouldn't he care about us, his children, that he purchased us with his own blood? Do you want how much <coughs> God cares about you? <coughs> he told us, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Why God chose the hair? Because if one hair actually is dropped, nobody worries about it. So that is a trivial thing. We don't care about it. And also it is impossible for anyone to know the number of the hair of his head. But God knows even the number, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And not a single one will fall down without permission from God. Not a single one will fall down without permission from God. Tassani uh, Anjil, who is the wife of Abu Nabshoi Kamil, recorded some tapes about her memories with Abu Nabshoi Kamil. And as you know, Abu Nabshoi Kamil died with cancer and he was taking chemotherapy. And with chemotherapy, the hair started to fall. So she was crying when she saw his hair is falling down. So he told her, why are you crying? Every single hair before it fell, took permission from God. Didn't he say that not a single hair will fall down without permission of your Heavenly Father? Why are you crying? God is in control. God is in control in our life. Yes, Abu Nabshu Kamil did not live long here on earth, but he earned the eternal life. Not earned it. He, he was given the eternal life as a gift from God. So, what I'm trying to say, we should not worry about things pertaining of this world. God is already taking care of it. Let us seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to us. Then another point God told us about fear. Whoever confesses me before men, the Son of Man also will confess him before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. When we say we are Christian, we are confessing our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are confessing that Jesus is God who became man. Jesus is the Son of the Father. So, can you confess the Lord Jesus Christ and then in the last day he will deny you? Definitely not. If anybody did a favor to you here on earth, you will actually carry this favor in your heart and you will actually try to return it back to him. If we as human beings do this with each other, what about God? If we confess him here on earth, he will not deny us. Confessing him by our words and also by our action. When we live as Christian and we become truly the light of the world and the salt of the earth. But if we deny him, not only by our mouth, but we can also deny him by our actions. So my action does not reflect that I am Christian. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. Then he said, if you deny me, I will deny you. But if you confess me by your words and your action, I will confess you. So don't worry, don't be afraid. If you are confessing me, I will never deny you. Why are you worried? Don't fear, little flock. It is your father good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. Then he said another point that we should not be afraid. He said, anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But to him who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. Who actually guides us? The Holy Spirit. Because you are the temple of God, and the Holy Spirit abides in you. So anybody is attacking you because you are Christian, 
He is attacking the Holy Spirit in you because you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And if He persists on attacking us, Christian, and persecuting us, Christian, then He is persisting on blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And the church history saying that anybody stood against the church did not prevail at the end. Because the gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church of God. So he told us, if people spoke against the Son of Man, maybe they don't know that I am the Son of God. If they repent, it will be forgiven. But those who resist the Holy Spirit all the way, and don't repent, will not be forgiven. And those actually who attack us are resisting the Holy Spirit. And we saw in our uh, contemporary time, when uh, the president of Egypt stood against the church and put his holiness, Pope Shenouda, under house arrest and put many uh, lay people, Christian and clergy, bishops and priests in prison, we saw how in 40 days, you know, he was assassinated. And this was actually action taken by God against anyone who stands against the church. So why are you afraid? Our God is a mighty God. And the last point he told us, even when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. So, even if they bring us in front of the courts or in front of magistrates or authorities, don't worry. You have the Holy Spirit inside you. And the Holy Spirit in that very hour will teach you how uh, you should answer. And we saw how people were crossing, examining the Lord Jesus Christ, as we heard in the Gospel of today, lying in wait to catch him in, in anything he might say that may accuse him. And we saw in, in, in our contemporary time how people tried to catch either Christian or clergy in anything, but God gave his children wisdom that they could not resist. And we wonder how these people, how these humble people got this wisdom and how these humble people were able to answer uh, those who want to catch them with any word they may say. It is the heavenly wisdom. And this heavenly wisdom is granted to lay people like the martyrs of Libya or to uh, consecrated people like clergy. That's the promise of God. Don't worry. You, you, you don't need to prepare a defense. The Holy Spirit in that very hour He will teach you what you ought to say. So in the, in the Gospel today God addressed two points. The sin of hypocrisy and the sin of fear, of fear because lacking of faith. So we should ask God today in the liturgy to cleanse us and purify us, uh, purify us from all hypocrisy and to give us integrity in our life. That we live in integrity and what we uh, present to others will be what we really are. And also we ask him to cast any fear from our heart, trusting that he is taking care of us, he is watching over us, he is the controller of all. Nothing will happen without his control and without his permission. Even one single hair will not fall down without his permission. May the Lord make us strong in our faith, steadfast in our faith to the last press through the intercession of St. Mary, Mother of God, St. Macarius, and all the saints have pleased him since the beginning. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.